Yeah, we gotta do Swindle. He seems to be everyone's favorite Combaticon, although I confess, not my favorite, uh, just in terms of personality and character, but also not my favorite in terms of this particular model. Welcome to Go Go KO. We are reviewing Pocket Toys PT-05 Ruiner B. Bruticus. This is the Swindle component, who is, of course, a little Jeep with lots of guns sticking onto him. As I showed in the earlier video with Bruticus, all the guns combined to make Bruticus's huge cannon. That is totally awesome. But today we're just looking at Swindle, who is, I would argue, the worst of the bunch. He breaks every which way. Uh, in the first video, I showed Bruticus, then I showed Onslaught. Onslaught's trailer is still back here. I have not done the totem, the Bruticus totem that it becomes yet, because he needs extra components, and those components are contained on Swindle. Let's take the guns off, because of course the guns fit on. It's a really nice touch for Pocket Toys that the all the weapons fit on. It's nice, even when you have parts formers, that they should be able to take all their pieces around with them. And in this case, these guys can take all their pieces with the trailer attached to, law, to Onslaught, with these guns attached to Swindle. That's actually really good because it makes it feel like everything belongs in the collection as opposed to uh, you having to keep things in baggies aside so you don't lose them. So it's got great playability when you do that. But that said, Parts forming really kind of bugs me. Um, this part of Swindle comes off. This roll bar top comes off. And it has to join the totem. That, I think, is really weird. It is a necessary component. There's a big piece in terms of connectivity. It helps connect Bruticus to itself. Um, but it is a little weird that it goes on Swindle and not part of there. And not onto the trailer, even though it becomes part of the totem, which the trailer transforms into, and it's a real bummer. Uh, in terms of the Jeep mode, not not loving it. All these pieces fit together just barely. Um, you can see into there; it's it's you know got no top. Of course, the roll bar did help cover that, but you can still tell, right? Even with this here. You can still tell that there's a great big hollow in there and it doesn't show any of the Jeep parts. That's a bummer. The feet are clearly just the feet up on top. You know, it's got sort of something between a Jeep and between a Hummer look. And that's fine. It looks okay. Um, but all the pieces feel very disparate. The lines don't go into each other very nicely. These door pieces or the window part of the door hang off the joint here is very, very uh, conspicuous. So it's okay. It's not great, but it is okay. Um, it is so tight and so difficult that the hood constantly pops up when you have him. You know, he is, I would argue, the worst looking vehicle of them. Uh, not badly. Like, again, I really am delighted by this, this vehicle mode. I am delighted by these toys um, for the price that they are, which is very affordable, at least on eBay. Um, they're still out there. They're very nice. I did give him a little itsy bitsy Decepticon symbol. Um, I'm actually uh, regretting that. I wish I'd given him a great big Decepticon symbol, but he looks good enough. He's clearly not a Jeep mode. He's clearly a cobbled together set of pieces meant to look like a Jeep mode. And for that, he loses the most points of all of these guys. And that's a bummer. What he really loses points is in the transformation I have transformed this guy a gazillion times. I really do like playing with them. They are great toys. That said, he literally falls apart when you transform him, and there's no way to stop it. I'm going to be as gentle as I can be with him. I'm going to try to do as much as I can without losing a piece. We'll see how this goes. Let's do the parts we know we can do. So, we'll separate a little bit. And then fold down the window areas of the doors. Okay, so far so good. Let's separate out the feet and pull them down. His legs come out very nicely. He doesn't gain much. He's a little guy and there's nothing you can do about that. Um, the feet pile down. They're on this very small hinged uh, set of joints, which is actually good. It gives them immense posability. And they do have a piece here that comes out it folds into the back, but you can put it down for extra stability. It's actually a very nice touch. Uh, you know, it's a piece that isn't needed. It's extraneous, but it does do a good job. You can keep them out for, again, extra purchase, but they fit up nicely, and it's nice. 
They don't need they don't, they don't need them, but they're there. Now his arms are a pain in the butt because they're very tightly folded. So we gotta pull them out and in order to do that, first we've got to remove the whole top of the Jeep. It just should swivel back. Um, it, it's on double hinges, but it's a tight, tight double hinge from here to there. Um, right? There's a hinge in here that it rolls on, and then this part is hinged to move it back. It should fit snugly. It doesn't when the hands are in the way, but it will get better. Um, the arms need to come up. Right, they just, you can see, this one is now higher than this one. They just pull out and swivel. It's very easy to do, but um, again, very delicate. Um, so the mid, the whole midsection pops out. You got to reach in to get his head up. Comes all the way out, and then the midsection comes back in. So he's got an itsy bitsy body. Everything up until now was great. Now we're gonna have to try to do the arms. The arms. The elbows go a whole 180. His hand is back here. It needs to be in the front, obviously. To move it, we're abrading plastic. And that was amazing that that came off without anything falling off. This front fender piece, up oh, there it is, just came off. I pulled it off, but only slightly, it was coming. Um, these pieces come off every time. The good news is they slide back on, nothing breaks. The bad news is they, they really do, they break very easily. I'm tempted to just Gorilla Glue this in place. Um, but I'm afraid if I do that, every time I transform him, it'll actually break as opposed to um, just sliding off and coming back on. So that's one piece that comes off. In addition to which, here we're gonna turn this. Oh, that didn't come off. How about that? Whew, so only one little itsy bitsy piece came off, but it happens every time. Once you do that, the back clicks in better. And there it goes. Um, you get a little swindle, and I do emphasize little. It doesn't seem to get much bigger when he transforms. Oh, and here it is. This piece is coming off. Again, I pulled it off, just, but it will come off all the time. Same deal. It fits in with little pegs. It's not glued in. It just fits. Again, I'm tempted to glue it, but I'm afraid if I glue it, then it'll break and not be as good. I'd rather it fall off and come back on. But there, that is swindle. He is little. There is no doubt about it. He has a tiny little Combaticon. He looks good, though, you know? Um, again, as I've talked up, oh, the piece came off. That I wasn't deliberately pulling off. Every time you try to pose him, you run this risk. His elbows are the weakest part just because they're so tight. They do not want to swivel. You have to click it. You have to basically push plastic every time because the clearances here are so tight. It is very difficult to get him to pose. That said... He's got quite a lot of kibble on the back, so that also hinders his posability. That said, the character looks good. His little swindle eyes are in place. He looks pretty good. I gave him a Decepticon tattoo, of course, the little badge. I don't know why I call them tattoos. I just enjoy that. I wish I had a tattoo, but I don't. Um, never had an idea for a tattoo that I liked. Plus, it's, you know, problematic for me one way or the other. Um, he has, you know, a pistol that he can use. And he's got the bazooka. The problem with the bazooka in Jeep mode is it fits on the wrong way um, because it only has one peg that holds it on and ostensibly that is its uh, edge piece. That is the end piece from which blasts emanate. I don't know if it has shells or a laser or whatever. Um, he can't really move the arm once he's in bazooka, got the bazooka because it doesn't, it doesn't look particularly well. But that's okay. For a bazooka trooper, you kind of expect him to be... You know, less mobile, Pew, right? Great big bazooka cannon, cool. But he is really poseable. He's got knees, he's got ankles that work. He has a functioning swivelly. Uh, see, that piece just fell off just for nothing. Um, he's got a functional swivelly waist. That's awesome. Excuse me while I put his piece back on. This is the downside to him. He really does come apart. He is poseable but he's difficult to pose. So he's got great shoulders, but you're gonna invariably knock off the arm pieces. He's got great swivel, but the back piece, the kibble, gets in the way. So he is my least favorite Combaticon. He never was a Combaticon I liked. I know that in both the show and in the fandom, he sort of has the most likability, 
Um, he's never been my favorite. I'm just a contrarian, even though he was very pivotal, I guess, in the IDW comics. He died. He didn't die. It was weird. Um, yeah, he helped do a whole lot of stuff. So, Swindle. He looks pretty good. G1 tech spec time. In terms of look, as a Jeep, he doesn't look that great because you can see all the panels are clearly slapped on, and that's a real bother to me. Um, in robot mode, he looks okay. There's just a lot of kibble here. I mean, kibble's fine, but these panels that just sit here, they're very annoying. Um, so... You know, for robot mode, I guess I'm going to give him, in terms of look, a 7 out of 10. He's okay. He's not great. Transformation, so you will always get at least one piece to fall off of him when you transform him. So the transformation is just a mess for him. It's a bummer, but there it is. Plus there's that roll bar piece that just goes away and has to join the totem. It's a bummer. Um... So yeah, for transformation, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. It's a bummer. Posability, he does have all the requisite parts of the pose, but again, you're going to knock off pieces of him, and that back kibble gets in the way when you want to pose him. So even though he's got the great posability, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a trifle difficult with him. I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 for posability. And the plastic, as with all the pocket toy stuff, the plastic is surprisingly good. I really like the plastic uh, on these guys. I'm surprised at how good the pocket toys always are. I will buy more of these suckers. It just feels Hasbro quality good. There's something about the plastic. It just feels really good in ways that other KOs don't. So in that sense, plastic gets a 10 out of 10. And price at 15 bucks uh, a pop for all five of these guys, each one costing 15 a piece for 60 uh, which you can get on eBay, that's really a decent price. These guys are a small combiner. I wouldn't expect to pay Hasbro-level prices for a full combiner. They're affordable. This is really the, the combiner that I'm most pleased with that I own. Um, and I own three combiners, so there it is. Uh, we'll talk more about combiners in a different video. But for price, he gets a 10 out of 10. Okay, so there you have it. This is the Pocket Toys PT-05 Ruiner B. Bruticus Swindle Component. Not bad.